I like to see more global collaboration where you bring in more people from around the world. Um, some of the solutions that they have for Sri Lanka could be deployed elsewhere and they really need to get the whole idea that they can impact more than just Sri Lanka. How does the, how does Silicon Valley thrive? Hmm. It's on Sri Lankans, Chinese, Indian, Malaysian, Singaporeans all going to Silicon Valley, right? The, the cream of the crop brand Sri Lanka as the place for professional services. Hello everyone, welcome to Hatch, another episode where we discuss travel nation to startup nation and discuss the possibilities of making Sri Lanka a great startup nation. Uh, my name is Jeevan Yanam, I'm the co-founder of Hatch, and today we are fortunate enough to have with us Clarence Tan, um, serial entrepreneur, serial angel investor, uh, professor of uh, Griffith and Bond University, and um, also uh, ex-ambassador of uh, for uh, Asia Pack for Singularity University. Um, um, thank you for coming, uh, Clarence, all the way from Australia. Sure. Uh, really appreciate you having here. And this is not your first time to sh to Sri Lanka. No. Is this your third time? Yes, it is my third time. Okay. And yeah. Um, and with pleasure to have you. Um, you. I think you've seen Sri Lanka transition over a number of years. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on where do you think. Um, how do you think Sri Lanka is progressing and what do you think are the opportunities, especially I think that you've seen Hatch, uh, maybe in the startup, uh, you know, uh, Sri Lanka's mm. startup nation, is that is that a possibility and just your thoughts from an, yeah. an outside perspective? Well, as you know, when we first met in Australia many, many, many years ago, um, you know, Sri Lanka has always been uh, very, very much, um, you know, in my heart and in my mind. And, you know, that's why I was thrilled to, when I first came to Sri Lanka. And then, uh, and then subsequently, I came again as uh, a keynote speaker for the event you organized for the Asian Business Angel Network. And I was so optimistic about the opportunities and the um, amazing um, work ethics and the innovative um, uh, characteristics of the Sri Lankans. So really, the country is the people, right? And the Sri Lankans overseas, um, you know, the diaspora of Sri Lankans, like the Chinese and, you know, all over the, all over the world, um, has really created um, fantastic ecosystem and professionalism, um, and I thought you know the whole country have have got the people, and 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 that's why I was very keen to look at potential um, investments and 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 working on this um, uh, project uh, over here. Um, so yeah, it's sad for me now to come here and and see you know a lot of um, a lot of the things that were progressing has kind of got stalled. Um, and, and, you know, I think there seems to be more people um, facing hardship. But coming to Hatch today, I mean, that seems to be like the um, beacon of light that is shining in this dark um, despair because you guys have done amazing from the, from the time when um, you, you guys shared with me your idea and it was just a very, very early days of Hatch. Uh, I think Hatch wasn't even actually uh, physically there yet at the time. And to see to what it is now and the people that you actually are uh, incubating and helping uh, progress is amazing. So I, I hope that um, this, uh, what you have done here could be replicated and scaled up uh, globally because uh, what you have done is uh, nothing less than amazing, you know, particularly in the circumstances that um, you guys are facing. Thank you, Vance. And um, Vance, I'd, I'd, I'd love to maybe pick your brain a bit, right? Because you've been part of a lot of innovation networks, right? Malaysia, um, I think Australia, et cetera. Yeah. Um, what makes these communities work or what makes innovation work? And, um, and, and do you think we as a country have the ingredients or how do we plan or how do we start pl you know, planning ourselves a bit better to start placing the ingredients in the right, in the right spots? Well, I, I think what you have done in terms of um, take, giving opportunities to empower uh, people, particularly in Sri Lanka, um, to give them the opportunity to excel um, and, and, and to give them the skill sets they need, um, that is vital. But I would like to see perhaps more, uh, well, I, I think your, your, um, your tagline is collaboration. Right, and I'd like to see more global collaboration where you bring in more people from around the world. I mean, you're very familiar, I'm sure, with Startup Chile, um, you know, where they actually went to Singularity University and wanted to spend a whole bunch of money building up a uh, incubation space. And they were advised that, you know, it's not the space that make the um, innovation, it's the people. 
So they, they, you know, they changed the plan, you know, and essentially open up to anybody from anywhere in the world that had a great idea. You get thirty thousand US dollars to start up, but you got to move to Chile for six months, and then you can leave. Only fifteen percent stayed back, but what it created was what you guys have done amazingly well—a community. So you might have a Sri Lankan or an Australian coming to Chile and then going back, but then now the network is there, and if you need somebody help in Sri Lanka or in uh, uh, Australia. There is that connection, so I think I like to see that expand more. That would be amazing. Yeah, and absolutely uh, right. Like when we plan um, startup nation, um, travel nation, startup nation, um, startup Chile was very much in kind of our our mindset, and what we wanted to do was invite people um, across South Asia, Southeast Asia, and say, "Hey, Sri Lanka is open for business." Yep. And um, we're kind of reinventing ourselves. Sure. And we're reinventing ourselves as a startup nation. Um, and I think uh, the one thing there is obviously there's a lot of garment support in, in that program. Yeah. Uh, we lack garment support, so we had yeah. to do it probably in the way, um, you know, a bit more kind of um, step by step, if you will. Um, so I, I'd, 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 you know, just, just to pick your brain again there. Um, how do you think we can do this maybe without so much garment support because A, the garment is is fighting their own battles sure, um, and they don't really care so much about startup till it becomes you know uh, something significant. Um, so how do we, um, of course, we will try and lobby garment and get them to support us, but are, are there any other low-hanging fruits that we, we should be kind of working towards the kind of startup nation goal? Well, I, I, I think... Um... Uh, definitely, there are a lot of um, um, opportunities to do that. Um, if the government cannot help you, it would be good if they don't um, stop you or be a hindrance, right? Um, I mean, I'm not sure about the immigration policy now and stuff like that. Um, it, it's difficult to get investors from outside to come in and put money in because they can't really take it out easily. And you know, even coming to the country now seems to be a bit of a hurdle. Yeah compared to like going to Malaysia or Singapore or Thailand, yeah. you know. Um, so all those things that the government could do without a lot of costs, if they could assist, uh, that would, I think, uh, be the first step. Yeah. Uh, because you need to encourage cross-pollination yeah. of um, people from other parts of the world and bring them here. Um, you know, I mean, even, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I see hatches, even an amazing tourist attraction, really. Um, for, for Sri Lanka, it's not just the beaches and the tea trails and the, uh, you know, and the safari park and all that, you know, it's, it's really what you guys have done here. It, it's um, it, showcasing it, you know, I, I think that's... Um... It's actually funny that you said that because uh, there's a tour that um, um, when the cruise liners come, there's a tour that actually comes into the building and showcases <laughs> that. All right. Okay. <laughs> which uh, which um, done by, by a good person called Mark Forbes, but okay. uh, it, it's, it's, it's amazing to to, to see that we've kind of reached, that we actually become a, a tourist attraction. Um, but but uh, let me ask you this. I think um, you uh, also represented Singularity University about and, and impacting a billion lives. Yeah. Um, um, tell us a bit more about that journey and and maybe advice for uh, people listening on, into the show. Sure. Um, and encouraging, I guess, them to take that same kind of uh, leap and, and, and how do they... Have, yeah, so entrepreneurship with a purpose, if you will. Right, right. Yeah, so so when um, uh, when I first went to Singularity University as a student of the graduate studies program way back in 2011 at NASA, um, you know, I was fresh from the startup world and the uh, angel investing world, but uh, really had no idea about the doing good part of things. And, you know, because, you know, my background was, you know, I was an investment banker in Wall Street when greed was good. <laughs> Uh, I left that to go to academia because I just thought I wasn't doing anything really useful for the world. I was basically, if you like it, gambling the bank's money, right? Putting some in my pocket in the bank's pocket, and it's a zero-sum game, if you, as we all know. Um, so I left that and went to academia, and although my domain knowledge was in finance, so I wrote a book on artificial neural network applications in finance all those many, many years ago. Um, but my students were able to take my ideas of, this is like we're talking about maybe 20, 20 over years ago, um, you know, took my ideas of applying neural networks uh, in finance to some, uh, one of them was from Juilliard School of Music to finish the, you know, unfinished symphonies of uh, composers and stuff like that, which was very, very novel at the time. Obviously now with AI the way it is right now, things these are becoming more of, an, more of the norm. Um, 
But going there, you know, being with 35, uh, with, with, with 80 other people from 35 countries, you see all the different problems that they have and the solutions that came out of Silicon Valley that we could use to try and solve those problems. Well, what we found out was that at the end of the day, you know, we can't sit in a lab and try and think of all these solutions and then try to deploy it in Africa or India or wherever, and it fails, right? Because you don't have those people, which is why Singularity insists that they want to bring people from those countries into Silicon Valley and inoculate them with the knowledge and the skill sets and the exposure to all the tech out there and let them try to solve the problems uh, and domain in their home country. So I think, you know, um, on that aspect, I think that's, that's why, you know, most of the companies I've met at Hatch are trying to solve uh, problems, you know, in Sri Lanka. Uh, so I like to see them actually expand out the horizon more. Um, some of the solutions that they have for Sri Lanka could be deployed elsewhere, and they really need to look to have a more global view and and get the uh, uh, you know uh, get the whole idea that they can impact more than just Sri Lanka. Yeah, absolutely. So we always tell startups that join us, you know, don't look at another me too idea. We have a lot of people trying to be say the Airbnb of Gaul, sure. you know, some part of Sri Lanka, and we're like, look. Uh, Airbnb was already invented to right. do something else and try and solve a problem that is in our backyard and try and take that solution global. Definitely. Right? And, I, and I think, you know, um, Sri Lanka is rich with problems, which is great fertilizer for on entrepreneurship. Um, uh, I, I think you, uh, um, you know, you, you took a, a, a stint at entrepreneurship. Right. Um, I would love, love for you to share with the kind of uh, said, listeners. Sure. I mean, you know, yeah, it's, it's ups and downs, you know, and it's a lot of risk taking, um, you know, a lot of betrayal. Um, really? you know. okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why I shared it with you. One of the companies I started, one of the first company was called Bond Wireless, where we got um, uh, patents on text messaging, uh, sending it securely and um, doing things like being able to do a print app from your phone and sending it by text messages, you know, at a time that was the main um, uh, way of communicating. Um, and one of uh, one of the law graduate of Bond University wanted to be a distributor partner in Malaysia, and things were going pretty okay. Uh, we had got you know a telco involved, you know, using our product and so on, and we had a, a, a desktop package product that he was distributing. And then uh, one meeting, one uh, one time I flew up to KL and um, and and had a chat with him, and he's like very bluntly said, uh, "We're going to copy your entire idea, and we'll be selling our own product." Wow. That's it, right? I mean, you can say like, yeah, you know, we can sue you, but really, in as you know, in the startup world, you know, nobody has time to do litigation and stuff like that. But that was amazing, right? At least he was frank about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess what they said, you know, the only straight thing about China man is his hair. <laughs> I can say that since I'm <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So 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 you 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 basically roll with the punches, right? I mean, you know, it might be karma, right? Uh, who knows, right? But the thing is that you got to pick yourself up. Yeah. And continue doing other stuff, um, and and essentially uh, move on. Um, you know, um, there are there are companies out there. You know that basically um, uh, kind of use what I what I term as um, like almost the old days of uh, getting protection money type of situation on tech. I don't know whether you guys are aware that some companies. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. There's a company in, uh, in 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 Washington in the state of Washington, you know, basically set up by a CTO of a very prominent uh, tech company. They buy up all the patents, and then when you when you create a startup, they send you a letter saying that you've infringed one of our you know thousands of patents. Would you like to settle, pay us twenty grand, or litigate? Mm -hmm. And you, as you as a startup, right, you're not going to get any investor if you're going to be in litigation. So you normally just cough up the money. It, it's terrible, right? I mean, these are practices that I find so unethical, but profitable. Mm -hmm. um, purpose, you know. So the purpose for progressing humanity, which is my MTP, you know, doesn't seem to gel with things like that. And I hope, you know, the listeners would try to basically, um, when they find a project or a startup, think about what the purpose is, the bigger good that they're trying to do for the world not just trying to fill the pocket. That's important, obviously, as you know, as you guys know about Ikigai, you know, be passionate about what you want to do, but make sure you've got the skill sets for it. It's what the world needs and you can be paid for it, right? And that's what you need to basically figure out. Um, absolutely. Um, and I think that kind of resounds the purpose, right, of 
we try and encourage the staffs here at Match to be purpose driven. And I think, you know, what you just mentioned mm. really talks about that purpose. Um, you also spent a lot of time um, working with Salim Ismail on exponential organizations. Yeah. And I think um, it's a fascinating tool set to, sure. to start thinking about as you create companies. And, 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 and in fact, I um, use your, your tool set, by the way, to, right. oh, to, to try and create it, uh, you know, um, Hatch Spectrum. Oh, wow. Spectrum, Fantastic. Um, and, you know, to try and create an exponential organization right. way. Um, um, so I'd, I'd love for you to share sure. with the listeners sure. a bit about exponential organizations and um, the different kind of tool sets that they can use sure. as they think about creating and growing startups. So that's, that's from the book uh, that Salim wrote uh, with some other authors, um, Exponential Organizations, and a new version of it's coming out uh, very soon. Um, and following on that, there's a book called Exponential Transformation and uh, the Whole Purpose Alliance um, um, uh, methodology. Uh, but... Uh, in short, what Salim found was that companies that were growing exponentially, which Hatch is one of them, by the way, so it seems to be working, right? Uh, we're getting there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you are doing it. Yeah. Um, so, so basically, they found that there were 10 attributes uh, that um, define an um, exponential organization. The first thing that you need to have is an MTP, a massive, a really large moonshot um, purpose, transformative going to transform not just your your business or uh, yourself, but the whole world or the industry. And the purpose should be noble, so people will follow you. And he has these 10 attributes. The first five is essentially um, an acronym of skill on how to grow the business exponentially. The first is the staff on demand. How do you, how do you create the uh, staff resources that can turn on and off, which you guys are doing it very well. Um, then you have C, community, which you guys are doing it. That's the most important, actually. How do you build a community that can support you and continue on um, the purpose of what you're trying to be? Um, a is algorithm. How do you automate the um, uh, use technology and so on to automate most of your processes, your business processes? Um, L is leverage on asset. So, you know, use spaces that Hatch provide or a coffee shop. Don't go buy an office spaces because you need space. And E is engagement. How do you engage with your stakeholders and so on? That's how to grow the business exponentially. Once it's growing exponentially, how do you manage it? Um, so that's where we have the acronym called IDEAS. I is interface. How do you interact with your customers? Um, you know, is it highly scalable? Is it like a platform, um, like an iTunes store? These dashboard, how do you measure how well you're doing? Because what you cannot measure, you cannot improve. And anything you digitize, is obviously measurable. Um, e is experimentation. Do you allow yourself and your partners to basically, and, and your colleagues to basically experiment, try out new ideas? If you don't, a new, you know, and your whole business model is based on one idea, a new technology comes in and basically disrupt it, you're gone. Uh, and let them fail. Let them fail early. We all know that phrase. Um, you got to, that's the only way you can learn. And A is autonomy. Do you allow your people to get the work done or are you a control freak? Everything has to go through you. Then you can't scale. You are the bottleneck. And the final S is just social technology that you can use, promote it. And you don't need all the um, 10 attributes, just at least four to make it grow exponentially. Thanks, uh, Francis. That's a very succinct. Uh, there's a lot more on uh, yeah, yeah. openextor.com. You can definitely check it out. Um, um, I, I was just uh, wondering, so after that, I think you went down, um, after the entrepreneurship route, you went down the angel route, yeah. started investing in companies. And um, I guess finding, is that from the need to find kind of like-minded people? And is that really what drove you to? Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so essentially, um, the whole, you know, on the other side of the table, right? Then you want to basically see like how you can uh, um, uh, basically invest in startups. And you guys all know that, um, you know, Angel investors look like a 15 times return and VCs want like 20 times return. It's not because they're greedy. They might be. But it's, the fact of the matter is one in 15 companies actually succeed. So you need to cover up your losses, yeah. right? Uh, but that also led me then to, you know, I've invested in over 55 companies now. And I find that the best ones are essentially the ones where our goals are aligned. And I find that it's possible if we basically uh, take a percentage of the revenue rather than taking shares in their company. Um, so I created, um, I'm a co-founder of a company called, um, uh, Epic, um, so it's epichub.org, Exponential Positive Impact Capital, where we are a platform that connects social impact investors to projects that create impact, 
positive impact, right? Um, so it's a revenue sharing model. We do not take equity in the company. We take a percentage of your uh, revenue. So I'm not concerned about how you spend the money. You've got the freedom to do it the way you want to, as long as you keep generating revenue and growing the business. And we are aligned with you as long as you grow. This is, uh, I think, uh, very timely, especially in Sri Lanka, when um, you have banks charging like 20, yeah. 30 percent interest okay. rates. And um, most startups can't afford it. And um, usually when startups go to the bank, uh, you know, collateral is asked for and stuff like that. So I think yeah. these new models of finance really need to yeah. uh, take place. Um, I would, would love to um, hear your thoughts on, on how, um, you know, especially startup financing uh, is being disrupted and what new models, whether it's AI driven or blockchain driven, et cetera, can be really looked at to really take um, maybe even the Startup Nation initiative to the next level, because I think finance is one of those things that will, um, obviously if there's the, the startups there, adding fuel to the fire is, is, is getting the funding and the finance, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So any thoughts on that? On... Yeah. Um, I mean, even, even if you look at the SDG, all the 17 goals there, I think the most important one is eliminating poverty, right? Without money, none of the others are going to fly. Um, so I, I think, you know, uh, my original idea actually for the um, EPIC came from um, uh, one of the sessions I had with the EXO movement where they're trying to, to tokenize um, the uh, investment into companies that they have uh, mentored for growing exponentially. Mm. Um, so I, I was thinking of basically tokenizing it and then essentially each of the investors get a token that they could then use to vote what which particular uh, company they want to put money in. Now, having thought about it, this is not a good idea, right? Um, and the reason why is because you want the um, successful companies, uh, you know, to be successful, and it shouldn't be a democratic process because if it is, then you are just uh, investing like herd mentality, yeah. right? You want the Warren Buffetts. You know, to basically do the investment for you as opposed if you to put into a fund rather than like voting for which one is the most popular, right? Um, so on the on the um, on the Epic platform, you can pick what company you want to invest in, and uh, we will take a small percentage um, of uh, of your revenue. So like you were saying, you're paying twenty percent interest. We might take five to ten percent, depending on the you know. Um, from the revenue of the company, yeah. which is like your GSV or whatever else you're paying. Um, and essentially, we're looking for a five times return within five years, um, which is similar to the VCs because of the risk that we're taking. But the investors are minimizing their risk because they're getting the money back sooner. Yeah. While if you take equity, you might never see your money for God knows when, right? Because until the company exit or pay a dividend and so on. Um, so this is why I think this is a fairer model. And also, we don't worry about valuation then. And as you know, you and I know that the valuation is just something that you know somebody put up there, and uh, there was never an agreement between the investor and the uh, and the founder of the company, yeah. right? So this way, we don't need valuation really. We just take a percentage of your revenue, and once we hit our target, you're, you're free to go. So yeah. yeah, very interesting model. I think um, um, there'll be a lot more of that, and you'll sure. definitely uh, work with the hat startups on, on on that model. Um, in, in terms of um, one of the things that Hatch is looking at uh, in, in you know, alternative, again, funding mechanisms is really crowdfunding um, mm -hmm. and seeing how we can bring it to Sri Lanka and use equity crowdfunding, debt crowdfunding, yeah. uh, et cetera. Just would love to um, understand from your experience, um, has crowdfunding really worked in markets like Australia and Malaysia? And um, um, is there opportunities for these mechanisms to be cross border, right? Um, is there a way to collaborate um, with with Malaysia, with Australia, and these other other kind of? Yeah, I I, I think um, definitely. Um, although things are becoming more difficult now because of the AML, the anti money laundering rules everywhere, um, so that is a bit of a hurdle. But um, depending on uh, what you mean by crowdfunding, whether you're crowdfunding a company to fund it, or you're talking about like um, them. Trying to sell a product, right? Australia had a fantastic success rate with uh, Flow Hive. They wanted to raise fifty thousand. They raised twenty five million, right? It was a basically a way to create a, a, a beehive that is friendly. Mm. You don't destroy the hive. Um, so that, and, and um, so, so that was an amazing success story. But and and on our own 
uh, with uh, another company I co-founded that's making smart affordable wheelchairs, um, GoGoTech, Abby by GoGoTech. We made a we make a smart affordable affordable electric wheelchair, and we actually put it out in the marketplace. And we managed to, um, you know, garner a lot of pre-sales off it, mm-hmm. um, you know, globally. You know, so so it's a good way to test the market and also get some funding off it. So okay. you, you know, um, but in terms of investment, um, that is particular to each um, country's oh. law, right? So that this is that that might be a bit difficult. Yeah. And in particular with Sri Lanka, I'm not sure again how you know we can mitigate the issue of. Um, um, the investors who put money in here to be able to take it back out. Yeah. So, so yeah. That, that that is something that we need to think about. Yeah, that's a, that's a question we need to um, probably uh, speak to Garment about. And, and which we did before. <laughs> <laughs> which we have. Um, yeah, I, I think you know we, we continuously lobby. Sure. And I think uh, these rules hopefully at some point will change. Right. Um. Um. You know, uh, just thinking about um, your investments and uh, looking at Sri Lanka. Um, where do you see the opportunities? I mean, you you've spent a bit of time here. Um, maybe not enough time to make that call, but sure. Just on on a preliminary basis, like w- w- where do you where do you see where Hatch can um, Hatch and the startups that we have fit into the global kind of um, you know uh, landscape? Um, I think the, the one that I'm really excited about is the uh, is the ag tech, right? The yeah. the agricultural technology thing uh, because. Sri Lanka produced some amazing products out here, like the um, cinnamon bucks that are well renowned, um, and so on, and tea, obviously. Um, so I think you know that is a. I think it's it's not so much the investment into some of the agricultural products, which which of course I think there are fantastic opportunities, but other countries are also doing it, right? Thailand and so on. But it's the ad tech that you're putting on that value adds yeah. the product. Um, you know, basically in uh, ensuring the uh, quality of the product and uh, and and the saleability of it. So, I think that that's a huge opportunity. And of course, you know, Sri Lanka is uh, well renowned for their service industry in terms of professionalism and um, developing software and also in uh, uh, financial practices and so on. So, those are things that they can um, obviously leverage on, and those things are very portable in terms of ability to distribute across the world. Um, so I think uh, those are those are exciting, and then you know, innovation in those particular areas I think will continue to be exciting for me. Yeah, and um, just to touch that on that point that you mentioned, right? You know, Lanka is known for professional services, um, and uh, I think about two weeks ago we had an entrepreneur come from uh, Silicon Valley, and he said, "Hey, uh, um, why isn't uh, Silicon Valley working sl- uh, closer with Sri Lankan startups?" Because in in a way, um, if the runways are going to be uh, reduced now mm-hmm. um, a lot because the funding has has kind of dried up yeah. a bit, um, and you know to extend runway in a place like Sri Lanka is very very possible. Um, is that is that something that um, is possible in markets like Australia as well, which I think typically um, value high level kind of services and, and as as well. Are, are, they, are they even looking at it, or is it something? That, that, um, that. I think they are, but maybe they're looking in the wrong places, right? Uh, that's 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 the issue. And then some of them have got really bad experiences, and then they basically uh, compound the problem of trust. Um, you know, as you and I know, you know the the, the company uh, uh, we created in Australia, the AI company that is working with um, with, uh, with 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 uh, you guys in Sri Lanka is um, uh, having a fantastic relationship, right? And it's all a matter of trust. Um, if I hadn't met you and knew about your services, um, you know that company would probably never outsource their uh, services to 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 them and or, or you know create these amazing products that we have. Yeah. So I think um, you need to gain more uh, visibility and publish more about the success stories of some of these uh, companies yeah. and, and to, to kind of uh, brand Sri Lanka as the place for professional services. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I think just to, from your experience, um, Malaysia as well had that big promise, um, build cyber jihad, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but I think uh, Malaysia didn't really grow as fast. I, I'm, I'm not sure for what reason. Um, is there a comparison you can make between kind of the Sri Lankan ecosystem and the. I think there's a lot of similarity, right? With a huge corruption problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that kind of. Uh... 
didn't help things. Yeah. Um, and then the brain drain, right? Yeah. Uh, a lot of Malaysians cross over to Singapore and to Australia and, and elsewhere in the world. Um, and I, I think, you know, uh, things are slowly reversing and uh, with new government in place and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. similar to Sri Lanka, hopefully, you know, things will improve. Yeah. Um, but I think the key again, you know, is, you know, everybody talk about foreign direct investment, right? I, I, I think more of like foreign foreign intellect, you know, investment. You need to bring those people to Sri Lanka. You need to bring those people to Malaysia. You know, how how, how does that, how does Silicon Valley thrive? Mm -hmm. It's on Sri Lankans, Chinese, Indians, Malaysians, Singaporeans all going to Silicon Valley, right? The the cream of the crop, right? Um, so what do we have, right? Um, you know, in, in Australia, in Sri Lanka and all that, you've got great weather, you got a, you know, um, uh, friendly people, great food, right? Not in Australia, but yeah, you know. Um, yeah. You don't have it yet. That's right, I had to make my own. So anyway, um, uh, I, I think those are the things, the standout stuff, right? But, but you need to basically enable them to, first of all, come to your country, experience Hatch, Right, what has to offer? Experience the whole innovative uh, innovation culture here, and then um, you know, and then I think things will happen. If you don't bring them, nobody knows about it. Nothing's going to happen, right? Yeah. So yeah. Thank you, Clarence. So sure. um, thank you for taking the time. Really, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah. And it's uh, always a pleasure seeing you. Yeah, and we will have you again on the show. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.